Edson Barboza, now 12 UFC wins, might have the greatest highlight reel in the history of this <laughs> lightweight division, at least, which is just so amazing. And I think for a lot of people, you know, we've seen him grow up, Kenny, in the UFC. He was 6-0 and when he debuted in the UFC in 2010. He's been at this forever, and he's still getting better. I mean, I think he was losing this fight to Benil Dariush, but man, did he not lose it in the end. A uh, big moment for Edson Jr. Barboza, obviously, over the weekend. Edson is, a, as they say, a motherfucking problem because, oh. I, I mean, his speed is just something to behold, man. I, I, I don't get it. It's not even fair how fast this guy moves. Huh. Um, but I, I got to say, listen, I, I thought Daryush fought a phenomenal round one. I actually had Daryush winning uh, that round. I thought uh, the fact that he was pressuring uh, Barbosa w- was giving Edson some trouble. You could see that El- Edson really didn't settle down in, in, until round two. Um, and once he did, once he got in his rhythm, man, uh, it, it was it was a big time problem for Daryush. Uh, and, and I thought Daryush fought a great fight. If you're going to shut down a kicking game, if you're going to shut down speed, I thought he did everything he possibly could in round one. But he was getting a little tired. I think those leg kicks were affecting him a little bit in round two as well. So he started to slow down. And, and once Barbosa got comfortable, he just started unleashing hell. And, and it was just amazing to see him eat the jab and go, all right, I'll trade you a jab for this knee. And it took out Daryush in an instant. Uh, just uh, uh, amazing to watch. And I tell you what, that guy is a terrible matchup for the lightweight champ, Conor McGregor. He is mm. an amazing striker. Uh, I, I think his speed, his ability to strike, and his ability to not – really throw himself off balance too much like he used to, I I think makes him a a very, very tough matchup for Conor McGregor. So I'm I'm not saying he's going to get that. I'm not saying he's going to get that shot right now, but I'm saying style wise, that's a problem. Well, he's certainly positioning himself. Obviously, there's a log jam at 155 pounds now. I was going to ask you if you think Edson Barboza can be champion because here he is now 19 and four, right? The losses, at least in the UFC, uh, Jamie Varner, Donald Cerrone, and Tony Ferguson. Yep. It seems like Barboza is sort of painted with the brush of a guy who has a suspect chin. I know there's the Varner TKO loss, but it held up on this night. You know, I thought Daryush had the right approach. I know you do. Uh, Brian Stan did. It's interesting, actually. Damian Maya, and I want to get back to Barboza in a second, but Damian Maya just said, if I'm coaching Benil Daryush, he said this to me in the van on the way back to the hotel. He said, if I'm coaching Daryush, I'm finding a way to take that guy down. And I think there's an argument on both sides, right? Because... You're playing with poison, as Daryush was, and he was willing to get knocked out, and he got knocked out, right? He got a lot done. He was winning the fight, but I think to outlast Edson Barboza on the feet over 15 minutes strategically has some holes in it, too. Well, I, I think he got a little impatient, and, and here's the problem. Uh, you know, and this is why I'm a little nervous for George St. Pierre when he gets back. A double leg isn't what it used to be, and, and a lot of fighters are going to be willing to make that trade and say, listen— You might be able to take me down, but I'm going to throw a knee as you come in. And and it's just one of those things. Daryush was looking for the takedown there, but I think it's a very unsafe option going for a double leg these days, especially against a fast and dangerous striker like Edson Barbosa. I think Habib Nurmagomedov has a much better recipe for the takedown for two reasons. First of all, it's safer getting to the clinch in that 50-50 clinch. And yeah. after you, if you're able to secure a takedown, if you're able to get a takedown from that 50-50 position and get on top, you have much better control. Whereas on the singles and the doubles, you see guys get taken down and guys are popping right back up. They're getting their head up, they're posting their hands on the mat, and they're getting right to their feet. You can't really do that uh, on a throw from 50-50 like Habib Nurmagomedov hits. So um, I I think that uh, Daryush did his best to get to a clinch. He was using more of a yeah. tie clinch as opposed to a wrestling clinch, and that's kind of where the problem lies. Obviously, you know, much easier for me watching uh, to, to analyze what he needed to do, but I, I think it's just a safer option. Getting to that 50-50 clinch against a fast striker like Edson Barbosa, it, it's not an easy thing, um, but yeah. uh, certainly taking a risk and going for the single or the double uh, is even more dangerous. That is very interesting and spot-on analysis. Um, So Anthony Pettis, Gilbert Melendez, 
Benil Darius, last three victims for Edson Barboza. I was going to ask you if you think he can can be champion because this win and and the nature of the win with you know the flying knee knockout really does position him nicely at 155. He's unbeaten since the loss to Tony Ferguson, obviously, which proved to be a difficult matchup. And I think Ferguson might be the best 55er in the world right now. Habib obviously is there, and Connor is lurking as the champion. Um, what do you think's next for Barboza, and can he be the UFC champion if things fall? according to plan. I, I really think he can. I, I, I think he beats, uh, I think he can beat Dos Anjos. Well, Dos Anjos is now going to fight at welterweight, uh, yeah. but he's currently number four. Uh, I, I think he beats Alvarez. I, I And I truly think this, I, I think that if he's able to stop the takedown game of Ferguson, I, I really think he's the better striker. We saw Ferguson take a lot of damage in that Barbosa fight. Yeah. Um, I, I think Ferguson did, you know, obviously is just a killer and just would not stop uh, moving forward, and, and I think Barbosa kind of folded to that pressure a little bit, got tired, uh, and Ferguson just kind of outlasted him and, and caught him on the ground. And Nurmagomedov, I, I think he's the toughest style matchup for Barbosa, um, but Barbosa's wrestling is looking much, much better. Um, I, I think on the feet, I think he beats all of those guys. Um, and yes, I do think he can be a champion. The way he matches up against McGregor right now, uh, I, I think that's McGregor's probably toughest striking matchup right now. Maybe, you know, Connor's a phenomenal boxer. I, I think he's probably a, a little bit cleaner of a boxer, but he's not as fast and he's not as powerful as Ezra Barbosa. Barbosa will probably have to win at least one fight to realize the Connor fight. You know, Michael yeah. Chiesa is a name that's out there, a guy he hasn't fought. That's really the only name. That makes sense. You know, he's not going to get a fight with Nate Diaz. I wouldn't think that would get Diaz out of bed. And I think he fought Michael Johnson before. So we'll see what they do with Barboza. But a big, big weekend for him. And and obviously what a pleasure to, you know, watch him perform.